Okay, so we're talking to Dolores, uh, who was born in 1928, and she's going to tell us a little bit about uh, growing up uh, through the Depression, the tail end of the Depression, and then World War II, uh, mainly just uh, kind of letting us know some uh, tips on how to make it through hard times. Okay, um, here's one thing we used. We didn't use Windex, probably didn't have it back then, to wash windows. We used a solution of vinegar and water. Also, we didn't have paper towels and we didn't use rags. We polished, after we washed the windows, we polished them with newspaper. Now that sounds odd, but newspaper gives a nice glow and the, the, the print doesn't come off. Curiously enough, I remember reading during the Depression times when they had babies in childbirth, they had lots of newspapers that they used too, uh, along with the sheets. That sounds sort of gross, but there's a lot of use for newspapers that we, do, we take for, don't take for granted now. Okay, we also brushed our teeth with baking soda. And, um, uh, so toothpaste was probably toothpaste available. Toothpaste was available, but it was expensive. expensive, and baking soda did the job. Also, we had a victory garden, and we would raise peas, green beans, uh, no corn that I remember, but carrots, onions, and things. And then um, that would help us uh, with our vegetables for our own meals, and also you wouldn't have to buy as many canned goods, because here again, canned goods were rationed because of the war effort. And how big would the garden be? It in the backyard, I would say, a, according to your backyard, I mean, we had, uh, I would say, about a third of the size of our backyard today. So it would so be about, about 10 or 15 feet. Just 10 there. or 15 feet. Just a small garden, but you could be amazed what you can do with it. And a lot of the people in the poorer neighborhoods are doing that today, too. And then, of course, we canned vegetables. We would go to... Uh, out in the country and get vegetables and fruits cheap and then can them for the winter. Then all winter long you could have uh, go down in the basement and get a jar of a uh, mason jar full of uh, fruits for or vegetables for your meal so and you, also made jelly and jam too. So you'd go out to the country where they had like the farm stands? Right, the farm stands. You could get the um, groceries or the fruits and vegetables cheaper out there. Another thing that they're starting to institute again today, which I was happy to see, was layaways. At Christmas, I think you could also do it throughout the year if you knew your children were going to be going to school, back to school, and needed new clothes. Instead of uh, buying something on credit, you go to the store and you pick out what you want and you pay so much down and then they lay it away for you and then when it's all paid for, you go and pick it up. I think, yeah, that um, that's probably because credit is less and less available now and right. stores want to make the sale, mm -hmm. so they just uh, they do that, yeah. They're real good about it. I know I've seen advertisements for it, and of course we did that back at, before Christmas. We would have a layaway and uh, put the things away and then have gifts. Another thing, too, I lived at the library, and I would uh, read it was my favorite hobby, reading. And then uh, today I still go to the libraries and I not only get books to read, but I also read the magazines there because magazines are very expensive if, if you subscribe to a bunch of them. And you can go to the library and you can either read them there or you can take out back issues. In fact, just a few months ago, I got a whole stack of book, magazines. The library was giving away and you could have as many as you wanted, old magazines. And I found some wonderful children's magazines that I gave to my little grand grandsons who were four, six, and seven. And their father said, oh, John liked that magazine you gave him. It was all about electricity in there. So here again, you can get a lot of freebies at the library. And of course, now today they have computers there too. And uh, some of the old sayings I remember were so important. Use it up, wear it out, make it do, or do without. Also, although my grandmother was very poor, she was never a poor mouther, as she would put it. Some people are always poor mouthing. And I used to ask her, why don't we get a new living room set like so-and-so? And she'd say, well, 
what we have is good enough. I just don't choose to spend the money on it right now. Of course, what I didn't know was she didn't have the money. But instead of, I never felt that we were poor because she never put on this poor aspect, you know. I figured, well, we were rich because she never complained about not having anything. Another saying she had was a penny saved is a penny earned. And uh, another, the other saying, see a penny, pick it up, all the day you'll have good luck. See a penny, let it lay, you'll have bad luck all the day. Today people can't be bothered picking up pennies, but we did back then. Now, to, back then you didn't have a sink with a plug in it that you could fill up the whole sink to do your dish dishes with if you didn't have a dishwasher. And I don't have a dishwasher today, and I do not use the plug and use a whole sink full of wa hot water. I have a plastic pan, and I do the dishes in that, and then empty it into the sink. And that way you save on hot water, you save on soap, detergent, and it's plenty big enough for the dishes that you do. And it's just a little, little way of saving things. Also, we save stale bread and used for bread pudding or cut it up for breadcrumbs or for stuffing. And I used to make our own after the boys were small and we didn't have a lot of money because my husband was the only one working. And I think my grandmother did this too. You get a bottle of maple flavoring and use that in sugar and you make your own syrup. And I remember I was taking care of a little boy one time and his mother says, He'll only use, he likes pancakes or French toast, and he only uses M Mrs. Butterworth syrup. So I got one jar of Mrs. Butterworth syrup, and when I saw the price on it, I said, that's enough of that. So when it was gone, I made my own syrup and poured it in there, and the little boy never knew the difference. <laughs> of course, my kids were used to it anyway. Another thing we used to do, and I think they could come back with that today, when the kids were small, and we drank milk, you'd think we had a cow. We had a milkman, but we didn't have a cow. And milk is expensive. I never let my kids drink pop, except on special occasions. Of course, looking back, they drank a powerful lot of Kool-Aid, and with all that sugar in it, it was probably just as bad for them, but we didn't know that at the time. But what we did do, we used to uh, get powdered milk, and we'd mix, we'd take a jug of milk and put half regular milk and half powdered milk in there. And then the kids couldn't tell the difference. And then for a lot of the baking, you used powdered milk too. So those are all little things that you learn. And we saved everything. Back in the Depression, we reused string, we used paper bags, we ironed our Christmas paper wrap and reused that and the ribbons. We used old envelopes for shopping lists or notepads, and you used your lunch sack for the whole week. You folded it up and brought it back. So you used to take Christmas wrapping paper and, and iron, iron it. And it, and then, yeah, yeah. And then you didn't have scotch tape, but you used some... You used those seals. They're little seals. They are stickers. And boy, was it hard to get stuff stuck with those. <laughs> You'd have more stickers on the packet than there was paper. But, uh, okay, well, we'll end that for now, and uh, thanks a lot for telling us your insights into how to save money during hard times.